All right, guys, I'm back from vacation, and it's time to get down to business. Today, we got Charleston White on the Fallen State with Jesse Lee Peterson, and the video is titled, Charleston White, Fatherless Homes Causes Cause Kids to Hate Male Authority. Highlight. So, Charleston White, I, I don't know what he considers himself, a conservative, definitely not a leftist. I don't even know if he votes, but, you know, he says he says things that ring a bell with people on the right, and, you know, he's pretty funny, so he's entertaining to listen to we're gonna get into this conversation between him and jesse don't forget to like comment share and subscribe while you're watching the video now let's get into it uh, did you have any relationship with your father growing up uh no no sir i didn't no uh, contact my, my father, at all uh yeah uh my dad my dad was in the navy uh my dad my dad retired from the navy and in and, and battle with mental illness uh, mm -hmm. And so I very, I probably can count on, on on two hands how many times I've seen my father in my lifetime. So what was it like for you not seeing him and being with him growing up? Did you yearn for him, or what was it like? Uh, I, I, all all children, uh, especially boys and girls, uh, you know, yearn for their father. There's, yeah. a, there's a strong desire. Yeah. Uh, uh, not having a father there, right? And 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 and, and your mother not having the words or or the the or the understanding or maybe the time uh to explain to you uh what it's like to not have a father right so most single mothers are working uh i don't know what it's like to be hungry uh i don't know what it's like basically basically what he's saying is mommy can't play daddy and mommy at the same time that's that's a, a tall task to ask for from anyone even being a single dad but, you know, it's a lot of women out here that think they don't need men but want to have kids. That's that's extremely selfish because the best situation to raise kids up in is one where it's the man and a, and a man and a woman together, two incomes together, two brains together. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep everything running smoothly. I like to come home and have our lights cut off. So my mother was very financially uh, responsible. And, and, and at some point we, 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 we made it to a, a level of affluence. But not having your father there. As a kid, not being able to articulate it, you internalize, yeah. right? So when, when, when the parents get divorced, kids typically blame themselves. So as a kid, you have questions. Uh, where's my dad? Uh, why is my dad not here? Uh, you may have a neighbor. Uh, I had a Hispanic guy by the name of Brian Alanese. Uh, Brian Alanese had a, had a father. So I, I spent the night at, at, at Brian's house. Uh, Spending the night at Brian's house gave me a dad at times, right? Yeah. So you get to see what a family structure looked like. Then when you go home, you have questions. Uh, you have internal thoughts. So as a kid growing up, mom working. So when I'm getting out of school, mom's going to work. You feel unloved, right? Mm. You feel rejected. Then that turns into hurt. So there's a pain. That, that just simply revolves around the fact of a father being absent, that this kid is feeling, right? He can't articulate it, right? No one's sitting him down and he's not going through counseling. So that's where the behavior begins to transpire, right? Yeah, it's just, like he said, he, go, he goes to his friend's house and he sees what it's like to have a family structure. And then he goes back to his house and it's just his mom. And that just leads, that leads you to ask so many questions. And, you know, even even in the two parent household uh, household, sometimes, you know, like just me, for example, my, both of my parents had to work. So when at a, at a point when my brother went off to college, when I, I, I think it was in the fourth grade, I would get home from school. I'd be alone, but only for about three hours because they got to go in and get the cheese. You know what I mean? But again, with two people, it's a lot easier than with one. That's a huge burden to put on yourself. So. You're feeling unloved, you're feeling abandoned, you're feeling rejected. Uh, that hurt begins to turn into anger, but the anger is just a smoke screen, yeah. right? You really want, so, so as a- And I hate to cut them off, but just one more thing as well. Not having the time to put into kids and watch kids, it can lead them down these terrible rabbit holes. Cause if you can't, if you can't monitor what they're, who they're hanging around, what they looking at when you're not around, what they looking at on their iPad. Kids can find all type of things that they don't need to be looking at. Even even in my age growing up with, with just the regular old internet without all the smartphones, 
you were still able to, you know, find some things on the internet that you weren't supposed to. Nowadays, kids have everything on their phone. You got to be super vigilant. I, I bet it's hard being a parent nowadays. The young man, I got all these emotions uh, inside of me. And so when I get to school, I got the, the PE coach, I got the math teacher, or I got the school police officer. When he confronts me, hey, young man, you need to pull your pants up. Well, all these emotions causes me to resent him. Yeah. So I got this displaced anger, right? He's done nothing to me, but he's a man. He's a male authority figure, and I want him to come home with me. Yeah. I wish he can come home with me. So I resent you telling me what to do, trying to correct me, and you can't come home with me. So I began to hate you, and I began to despise other men, other male authority figures, mainly other black men. So when right, you so were what, when you were asked, and the fact that that you know people on the left look over this and don't really bring this up at all, just shows their dis disingenuineness. I don't even know if that's a word, but it just shows how disingenuine they are because this is a huge problem. There's plenty of things that affect uh, what, are, what what do they want to call them? Um, um, uh, I don't know what they call. It. There's plenty of things that that affect black people, people of color. You know, minority people, people that are minorities and um, in lower income homes. But this this is a huge one. And it started. The number has grown over the years and in, in, in every race category It's more white fatherless children, more black fatherless children, more Hispanic fatherless children. You you name it. It just is it's getting out of hand. Your mother, where is my father? What would she say? I never thought to ask. You never asked uh, at all. Oh, uh, I never thought to ask because what's not there you don't know to ask that. It's normal, right? You, 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 back, we come up in a generation where children don't ask questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we come up in a generation where kids don't ask grown folk questions about grown folk things. Uh, so I just, read that you, you ended up being, becoming a part of a gang when you were younger. What made uh, you, I joined, go ahead. What, uh, what made you get involved with gangs? Uh, what made you get involved with them? Uh, it was everything I was looking for, uh, coming from a single parent home, never been, never been spanked by a man, uh, never been disciplined by a man, uh, never been, uh, corrected by a man, uh, never been hugged by a man, uh, never had a man say, I'm proud of you, never heard a man say, I love you. So, man, that's gotta be rough. So, uh, the, the older guys in the game, uh, gave me the affirmation uh, that I sought to have from a father figure. Did you know uh, at so, the time you were doing it because you were looking for the love of a father? No, no, no. Uh, you, 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 you talking about a, a, a child with an undeveloped brain. They don't know what the fuck they doing. Yeah, yeah you talking about an undeveloped brain kid. Everything yeah. that a kid does is, is it's all impulsiveness, right? Based on what they feel or what their friends are doing. Uh, I just wanted to belong. Uh, it wasn't a matter. It, it, when, when you're going through what you're going through as a kid, you don't know I'm doing this because dad's not there. Right. You just know you feel something. Yeah. You just know you were born into a condition. You was born into a situation where your dad's not around. You don't know that's not normal. So, so I met a kid. Go, go ahead. I, I met a kid once before here recently, and he's had both his mom and his dad. And so I asked him, hey, what's it like to have both your mom and your dad? Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't understand what I was saying because yeah. he don't know what it's like not to not have. To have it. That's right. So to grow up and, 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 and every child you see don't have a dad, that becomes normal. It's, yeah. the, it's the house with the dad that everybody says, hey, man, they got a dad over there. So you don't know until you grow up and, 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 and and you can look at your life uh, and assess your life where you can start connecting the dots. But when you're a yeah, when you don't have a dad disciplining you or maybe an older brother or some some male figure you can look up to when you go out into, out into the world, you're not going to have any respect for for um, for authority or for for your for your elders, older males police officer. You're not going to have no res you, you have zero respect because you never learned it in the home kid it's your environment it's the conditions it's the 
your, your nurture, the, 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 the foundation of your home life uh, dictates uh, what you're going to go outside and become. It's interesting. That it's interesting in that your mother uh, brought you out of poverty or, you know, and, and bought a home. She got a job. And you and your brother ended up with your own rooms and everything. And yet that wasn't enough for you. Because I read well, that just you it. decided to run away from home and and go on a crime spree which led you to murder at 14 and go to prison and all that. So it's interesting how well, that's still... I've, ne I've never been to prison. I mean, jail. Let me just say this. To uh, jail, I've right? Never, I went to juvenile. I went to a boy's home. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just say this. Okay. Get the facts straight, Jesse. Culture, culture, right? Culture is way more influential, way more powerful than home life, upbringing. Let me give you an example. There was a time when black people hung from trees. What do y'all think about that? Drop that in the comments below. Culture being more um, influences kids more than their home life and upbringing. And there was white people standing in the crowd saying, I don't agree with that. But they wasn't going to speak out because culturally it was okay to hang niggas. There was a time when white people said it was okay to enslave black people. But there was a part of the people that says, no, nah, that's not right. Yeah. But culture, but culture says we're going to do it. So you put your head down based off what you was raised. But I get what he's saying. So it's, it's just culturally accepted. You go against the grain, you could be punished for it. A lot of people didn't want to. That's why I, I guess it took it took so long for the for the civil war to happen, uh, you know, a revolution to happen. But it did happen. You know, just be thankful for that. At least he brought up the fact that there were white people that didn't agree with it. Everybody wasn't thinking. The, everybody wasn't thinking the same thing. But overall, the culture influenced it all, right? That's why culture is so strong and so in, impactful. So here I am. I'm born into a culture that goes against what my mother teaches us. Yeah. I'm born where mm, my okay. culture, I got my mom saying, you need to go to work. I got an uncle who I see on a regular basis by way of being family members. He a pimp. I got a grandfather who sell drugs. I got another uncle who sell drugs. When I look across the street, I got another neighbor. He's getting out of jail for robbery, uh, my cousin. So when I come inside and I cut my television on, I'm born in 1977. Think about the culture then. Pimps was glorified during the black exploitation film era. Yeah. Super fine, the Mac. <laughs> so I'm, I'm growing up watching all of this on the culture. I got a mother going to work. My culture. Y'all seen these movies? Let me know in the comments. Culture don't show me mama going to work, but I see mama going to work. All the things that my culture presents to me is negative. Yeah. And I have these same negative. But yeah, I get what he's saying. So he's saying that as a kid growing up, especially in a place that he's grown up, but I think every kid can relate to this in some way, shape, or form, that you got you got your parents trying to instill those values in you. And you want to listen to them, but when you go outside, the world and culture is telling you the exact opposite. You see kids getting away with all type of stuff. You see kids doing things that they shouldn't be doing, breaking rules, breaking the law. So you just kind of get in where you fit in. It's that struggle between what you taught at home and then when you go out into the real world. Negative images, not just in my family, they in the community, they at my friend's house. They outside the school. So biblically, my mother says that the Bible says a son can do nothing without his father, that he can only do what he see his father does. So if there's no father around, who do you mimic, mama? So I know a lot of young boys who didn't have no uncles, didn't have no brothers, didn't have no male cousins. So they was the little boy sitting down peeing outside when we mm. were standing up peeing. Mm -hmm. That's that's wild. I, I I believe, I don't know who dropped this statistic, but I think the majority of um, mass shooters have all come from 
um, fatherless uh, kids, kids with single single moms, kids whose dads aren't around and in their life. So I seen a whole lot of little boys who was mimicking mama. Yeah. So they sat down and pee until they went to school. Yeah. So you know, women by nature are a bit more emotional. You know, shout out to the single moms. Shout out to the single moms that didn't put themselves in that position on purpose, more so because you know you gotta you gotta do so much and. You can only you can only you can only do what you can. And, you know, like I said earlier, no, you can't no woman can be a man and a woman. You can't be a mama and a daddy. You could try. You could try your best. But, you know, it's best to have that male presence. If you don't if you don't grow up with a strong male presence and you only have your mom to look at, like he said, you're going to mimic. You're going to start to mimic her and her her actions and her traits and her emotional natures. So, yeah, man, this is this is a. I'm glad they're talking about this because this is a, a huge issue to me. I wish it was talked about more. I had uncles in mimic, right? So Confucius said, "He who controls images controls minds." My little mind was being controlled based on me being young with a young impressionable mind. So it's not that I went against my mother. I have a culture. You got NWA, fuck the police. So all of this is being pushed upon us as children culturally. Yep. Yep. Boys in the hood, menace to society. They take away the, the Cosby show. They take away a different world. So culturally, man, all of all the negative images is being propagated to me. So I literally grew up believing that men, for one, don't work because I've never seen a man get up and go to work. I grew up believing that men went to prison and went to jail. So I aspired to be a man. How do you become a man? Amazing. You got to go to jail, nigga. <laughs> so I want to be a man. That's I amazing. heard you saying, mama, you're a woman. But I want to be a man. Yeah. Yeah, so that was good. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think I think a little exercise people need to do more often is try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, you know? Like, I, I'm, I personally think that just because you're white, I think I think no matter what color you are, white, Mexican, you can have an opinion on black people and black people can have an opinion on white people. So your opinion, you you entitled to it. But just try to imagine what it's like growing up in a, in, in a place like that where you have no positive role models. You know, the technology wasn't as advanced as it as it is now today for, you know, a dude like Charleston White, you know, and, and I think, you know, black people should you know, try to put themselves in the shoes of white people sometimes. You know, a lot of black people think that if you white, all your problems solved and everything is amazing. But white people got problems, too. White people live in poverty, too. You know, that that's I feel like that's something a lot of black people never think about, putting themselves in the shoes of white people in poverty. You know, this whole white privilege thing. But I've gone on long enough. The video has gone on long enough. Glad to be back. There will be more videos coming to you every day. You know how we do it over here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Till next time, guys. Peace.